welcome back to Movie Review Mom. Thanks so much for visiting my little corner of the internet here and for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. So today the movie I'm reviewing is called Cutthroat City. This movie is rated R. It's two hours and three minutes. And the Movie Review Mom grade I'm giving it is a C, and I'll explain why. So first, in a quick nutshell, set in New Orleans during the infamous Hurricane Katrina, this film features four friends from the poor Ninth Ward who are desperate enough to get involved with a local gang and a dangerous heist. Gee, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Directed by the de facto Wu-Tang Clan leader, RZA, and in the credits of the movie, they call him The RZA. This movie is very raw and dark and tells a compelling crime story with drama and action. It's not a movie that will appeal to a lot of people simply because of the immense profanity and very rough environment. It's well done. The acting is great. I'll get into more things that I really liked. But again, I think a lot of people just won't be able to enjoy watching a lot of the things that happen. And so partly for that reason, I'm giving it a lower score. Um, some tips for parents. This is a rated R movie. And it has terrible profanity, including zillions of F-bombs and a zillion times usage of the N-word. So a lot of people are going to be offended by just the language alone, let alone the content, the drug use, and all of that kind of stuff. So again, don't let your kids watch this for sure. And, you know, this is not a movie you're going to sit and watch with your parents or your grandma or anything like that. It is a very specific audience. There is some skin shown during a honeymoon scene, but you really don't see anything, which I was grateful for because it's rated R. It could have gone, you know, all in your face, but it didn't. So I was grateful for that. How However, you do see some other things. Uh, for example, there are several scenes in a strip club with views of scantily clad strippers. That's one thing. But you see topless women and some other things that, you, you know, I just was not interested in seeing. And so there's that. A woman flips the bird. That is mild in comparison to a lot of the other things. There's drugs alcohol, talk of it, but also you see it being used. There's violence with guns as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat, murder, sometimes very brutal with blood. Of course, there's crime. You see the rear end of a man when he pulls down his pants and then it alludes to something that happens that's you know, disgusting. It's meant to be funny, but it's mostly disgusting. And then the movie actually starts kind of with um, graphic novel images with violence and blood spatters. And that lets you know kind of what you're in for. If you're like offended by just that intro alone, then this is definitely not the movie for you. It, it's appropriate for the movie because the protagonist is creating this graphic novel. And as you see some of these images, you realize he's simply reflecting the world that he lives in, which is very brutal. Um, thus the name of the movie. Now, some themes that are introduced in the movie that are worth talking about are certainly racism. And that's absolutely in the news at least in America right now, blame versus taking responsibility. Don't waiting, don't wait for the government to save you, save yourself. And the context of that is the movie takes place before, during, and right after Hurricane Katrina. And so it shows some of the images that we saw during Hurricane Katrina, where people were standing on the roofs of their house holding a sign saying, help, save us. You know, and those were people that did not evacuate when they had the opportunity to. So there's another movie I just recently reviewed called Greenland. It's a disaster movie. Uh, it's set to uh, open in theaters September 25th, as well as go on to streaming. Um, 
in that movie review, which I'll play after this movie so that you can see it, I offer some emergency preparedness tips. And I think that that's really important to take responsibility for yourself and your family prepare what you need. I offered a free 72-hour kit, and it's called a 72-hour kit because the government admits that in a big disaster, it's going to be at least 72 hours before they can get to you. So if you have an emergency backpack with supplies, food, water, medicine, diapers, things that you need for your family to survive for at least 72 hours, um, that's the least that you can do to have personal responsibility and be able to protect your family. If you'd like a copy of my checklist that I personally use for my 72 hour kit, I have one in each vehicle and I have one for each member of my family. They're hanging in the garage. So if we were told to evacuate it, we could grab it and go and we would have everything we would need to survive for a short time at least. Anyway, if you'd like a copy of that, uh, just email me at Trina at moviereviewmom.com and I would love to share that with you. But anyway, back to the movie. <laughs> I'm kind of passionate about being prepared. Um, so some other themes were be careful who you spend your time with because you become like them. They influence you. You, of course, influence them as well, but there's a pretty strong message there. Uh, people do desperate things in desperate times corruption, and that's society, corporations, and individuals, and how corruption works with along all those three levels. Rationalizing crime, people who commit crime believe that they've been wronged, and therefore they deserve to take whatever they want kind of a thing. Choices and their consequences, greed, second chances, and home and the definition of home is described and illustrated in the movie. Now, some things that I really liked about the movie are, first of all, the talented cast. It includes Shamik Moore, Demetrius Ship Jr., Denzel Whitaker, uh, Kian Johnson and Isa Gonzalez. I've heard her name also pronounced Isa. Anyway, she's just beautiful. But wait, there's more. There are some impressive, I, I want to call them cameo performances, but the first one is Ethan Hawke, and he really is more of an integral character to the movie. So it's really not a cameo, but certainly a big name in this movie. Terrence Howard more of a cameo. Wesley Snipes, a little bit more of a cameo. Isaiah Washington, Cat Graham, Little Church, Little Church, uh, Joel David Moore, and Rob Morgan. So um, I'm very impressed with the cast. I liked, as I mentioned before, the use of graphic novel to illustrate the world that the protagonist lives in. The environment is certainly appropriate for the content. And uh, again, not everyone's going to enjoy that, but it's very well done and you really do get into that environment. And so for things that I didn't like, the first thing I wrote was on my written review at moviereviewmom.com was that I felt like I had just walked through the swampy gutters of New Orleans after watching this foul-mouthed film. And I felt like it was just exhausting. I couldn't get, wait to get out of that environment. But it was also very powerful and certainly shines a spotlight on a very important issue of society and economics and how some of those people really struggled. They weren't given the fair chance that they felt like they deserved. They had an equal opportunity to leave before the hurricane came. But of course, nobody really anticipated the hurricane to be that devastating. And so a lot of people stayed and were put in very awful conditions conditions and situations. Now, after the hurricane, as the families moved back, some areas were given more relief financially than other areas. And I don't know all of the political decisions behind that, but the movie definitely addresses that. And, and so I thought that that was actually really powerful. There is some bad editing moments of the movie, which kind of surprised me. Some of the accents were also kind of bad and inconsistent. In some scenes, they were 
were heavy accents and other scenes it drifted back to more of just an American normal accent rather than maybe a Southern or New Orleans accent. There's also a really interesting juxtaposition of religion and crime. For example, several men pray, sometimes even in church, before they commit crimes and murder people. And as a Christian, that's so frustrating for me because Christians are supposed to be kind and loving and not murder people and commit crimes. And so there's obviously a paradox there, but it's also part of the culture. So I thought it was interesting to watch that dynamic. Um, I just always get frustrated when Christians are portrayed as just being hypocrites. And so I would certainly view someone who's praying before, you know, killing people hypocritical. But anyway, that could just be me. <laughs> Now, the protagonist had a college education and has incredible artistic talent, yet he chose to commit crimes, claiming that he wasn't given equal opportunity. And I have a real tough time with that because he was given a lot of opportunity. Now, granted, he was in an environment associated with friends that didn't have the same advantages. And so he got it, he got sucked down into that gutter. Now there is an interesting ending and it might be confusing for people, but um, I thought it illustrated really well the ability that we have to choose our consequences. If you don't want to go to jail, then if you deconstruct that, go backwards and look at the choice that would put you in jail, you could choose not to make that choice. You know what I mean? Uh, versus you want to get a scholarship, or in this case, the protagonist wants to get a published graphic novel. So that's the consequence, the, the goal that he wants. So to deconstruct it, he needs to decide, well, what are the choices that can get him there? Obviously, go to literary agents and publishing houses, which he does. You see a scene where he meets with this one guy but don't give up. If the first person rejects you, keep persisting. And that's one lesson of the movie, I think, as well. If you don't get what you want, the option isn't to immediately go to crime, but to keep persisting in that industry. And I know that sounds really simplistic. And for the audience that is in this world, they'll probably just dismiss that as being very simple-minded. But in a sense, it is. You choose your consequences based on your choices. Anyway, uh, like I said, I thought that there was a lot of really good themes and messages in the movie. Um, I'll share, let's see, let me look at some of the lines that I wrote down. This actually was, maybe I'll just tell you this one. And on my website, you can read all of the other lines that I include, but this one I thought was really good. There's a, a woman who's getting married and then she's with her mother on her wedding day. And she asked her mom, you know, were you happy on your wedding day? Have you been happy in your marriage? And the mother thinks for a minute and she says, it's not always about happiness, but meaning. And I loved that answer, actually, because you're not going to be deliriously happy all the time. Nobody is. I mean, just life will present challenges that will seem to steal away your happiness. But meaning is something much more substantial. That's where joy comes in. So even if your everyday life of your family is difficult, paying bills, changing diapers, there's still joy and meaning in all of those tasks, right? And that deeper joy can make you feel that sense of happiness. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I thought it was a really, really good line. And then there are some other lines as well. Um, now, I wanted to share really quickly some recommendations for movies that I think you might like, possibly better than this one. This movie is about a heist robbing a casino uh, several times actually. Uh, but some other heist movies that I thought for me were more enjoyable were, of course, Ocean's Eleven and that entire franchise. Another really fun heist I enjoyed was The Italian Job. And then another more recent one is Baby Driver. Now, they all kind of put you a little bit into the gutter, but not to the extent of this movie, which is why I felt it was more enjoyable, these other movies. Anyway, that's it for my review. I hope if you see this movie, you enjoy it, and you're able to pull out those 
messages and lessons learned so that your life can be improved, happier, find that greater joy and that greater meaning as well. All right, that's it for me. Have a great day. Bye for now.